everyone. Welcome to episode 31 of the Backstage Knits podcast. I'm Catherine. This is Angel. He's, we haven't seen him. We got him since I last podcasted here over the summer. Um, this is a knitting podcast and you can find me on Ravelry as Backstage Cat Knits. Also on Instagram as Backstage Cat. Bye, Angel. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, so... We're going to jump right in. It's a little hot, so I want to talk about this finished object as soon as possible. Get it off my neck. Um, yeah, so I'm from Harvard, Connecticut. I think I said that. Yes, so I finished my shawl, you guys. If you watched my last episode, you saw this. Um, I knitted this entire shawl recently on a train trip, um, which was three and a half days that I took from here in Hartford to Colfax, California, which is about an hour and a half um, northeast of Sacramento. And I um, spent a couple days in Nevada City, which is about 20 minutes uh, away from Colfax, and saw my friend get married and walked around, but decided to take the train out there. So I had a lot of time for knitting, and so I knit this. Uh, this is the Talisman Shawl by Helen Stewart. It was part of the uh, First Shawl Society. I knit this out of yarn I got at Loop in London, England. Um, this is the Uncommon Thread BFL Light Decay, which is just 100% superwash BFL. Um, there's a, approximately 225 meters to 100 grams. That tag's going to be impossible to see um, because A, not only does the zoom not feel like working all the time, but B, it's printed on this like, almost like wax paper. It's not waxy, but like, translucent paper and so it's just gotten very scuffed in its travels uh, across oceans and across the United States. Um, this is the colorway Olive Leaf which is a beautiful like silvery um, gray, uh, very very lightly tonal. I'm sorry it was really warm when I first started. Um, and yeah I knit uh, using a full skein and then 81 grams of the next skein. So it came out really well. Um, I knit this in the small size. Um, I thought I would be able to get the medium out of it because I had gotten the medium out uh, I got the medium size in another Helen Stewart shawl which I thought I remembered had the same like levels of yarn requirements using a sport weight and the Ravelry description said you could use um, Uh, you could use this yarn for patterns that called for like either DK or sport. Um, the original pattern asked for um, one and a half skeins of fingering weight. So, but I went up a needle size and I think that um, probably meant I got the small size. But I'm okay with that because I actually, I, I don't think I would have gotten down wanted to go down a gauge. I, I really like this gauge. Um, I don't like stocking up to be too loose, so it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty tight fabric. Uh, I think any tighter would have been too tight, any looser would have been too loose, so I'm happy with the finished product. And it's still a really good size. I mean, I don't usually wear my shawls like shawls anyway. Um, you know, it's a little bit small for to really get good arm coverage, although, I mean, it comes pretty far, um, but anyway, I'm happy with it. Um, this, I highly recommend this pattern, it is super duper mindless knitting. As you can see, there's only something special not very often, and it's a repeated pattern. The end is the most complicated part, and even that is super easy. Um, so it was perfect train knitting. I got everything done on the train except for the bind off. So <coughs> I was really happy with that. Um, I've already won this a couple times since I've been back last week to work and stuff. So um, it's a good pattern. That is that. I need it on size seven needles. And since I talked about going up and down a needle size, um, size seven to get this good skein, which I often do on fingering weight shawls. Even if they're fingering weight, but 
And I think for this yarn, it really worked perfectly and, and uh, is a perfect gauge. Sorry, I've been a little sick. It's probably not the ideal time to podcast, but scheduling wise, uh, my roommate is gone for the day. I've got a free day of just organizing and all that. So it felt like the right time. Even though it's not been that long since I did a podcast. Um, I've got another finished object here to show. I finished this prior to my trip, but um, had it, I think I talked about it on the podcast I did over the summer, <laughs> and um, didn't get a chance to talk about it because I didn't podcast. But this is a giant shawl. Um, this is originally was a mystery knit along from Kristen Kapoor. Uh, it was a Through the Loops 2017 knit along, and. I really liked a lot of Christian Kapoor's designs. I'd never knit one, but just all the patterns on Ravelry were really beautiful, and so I decided to join the Mystery Knit Along. Um, I started it... I can't remember if I started it right before I started my sweater, or right after, but either way I really wanted to just work on my sweater, so I fell behind... Um, I think this was like over four weeks. I kept up for the first week, and then I was like a week and a half behind, and then I caught up a little, but... Um, either way, I didn't finish it with the knit along, but I finished it now. Um, it now can be found on Ravelry as Fugue and Mosaic Minor. Um, it's this really pretty triangular shawl, um, knit starting from here, and it has this repeating lace section, and then, um, various bands of, like, motif sections. So, um, this one's pretty simple, pretty, like, tight, just sort of like a... Almost a, I think it's called linen stitch. I don't know if it's a true linen stitch, but it sort of looks like it could be. Um, and then you do like a, a smaller sort of diamond pattern. It's really hard to see up here. Um, I probably could have chose two yarns that were a little more contrasting um, just to make the pattern show up a little bit more. They look really good together, but it's a little hard to see the pattern, especially here in this kind of like pyramid mosaic, which looks really, really obvious and cool on some people's, but on mine it's just a little bit hard to see on this third mosaic section here. And then finishes off with just a lace border. So it is huge. I don't remember how much I used. Oh, actually I do. I used all of this gray skein. This is uh, skeiny dipping which I think is a New England local dyer. I got it at a yarn store in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, this is a Cannonball Sock, which I highly recommend. Um, and this is Prone to Vapors is the gray one, and Frostbite is the maroony one. Um, so anyway, I used up all of the gray, and I actually, well, m maybe not quite all of it, but I don't know if you're able to tell, but there are two rows right along here that look slightly darker, and that's because they are a different yarn. Um, I had some Malabrigo um, sock that was a similar color, and you can tell from up close, it's going to be hard to see because th this pattern is so light and airy, right? But yeah, you can see it there. Um, you can sort of tell that right before the lace section, um, there are two stripes that are a little bit darker, but in the whole of the shawl, it works out. Um, actually, it might be three stripes. But I, I, I knew going in that there wasn't going to be enough, and I talked about this last time. I, I contemplated doing a third color. You could have, you know, in the mosaic sections, done a third color, um, or substituted the gray for a third color, is what I'm trying to say. But I couldn't find one in my stash that looked good. Didn't want to buy another one. And, you know, yeah, so you can see it. Uh, down here now, but when you're wearing it, it doesn't make any difference. But yeah, big, giant, huge shawl. As you can see, it doesn't even fit in the frame, but uh, looks really good. I like it a lot. I've been very much into neutrals lately. Uh, as you can tell, I've got two grays here. Um, I just think they're easier to wear, especially in my professional life uh, wardrobe, so... That's that. I don't know why I'm sitting here like I'm going to keep this on, because I'm not. It's decently cool outside, but my apartment retains heat very well. And so the sun is like blaring in, and it's just 
hot. So I apologize, I'm going to go sans the knitwear um, for today's episode. Alright, let's talk works in progress. I've got three that I want to share. Um, the first one is, well, you've sort of seen two of them before. So the first one is my I Want a Revelation socks um, by CC Allman. This is a Hamilton kit. So I've got a picture, but it's really hard to see. The, the, the coolest feature is that it's got these um, pearl buttons that came with the kit. Um, and so the yarn is very colorful yarnings in the saturated sock self-striping. Self and this is the colorway work, which um, was dyed specifically for this kit as a collaboration, uh, inspired by the dresses the three Scholar sisters wear um, during Hamilton. So I think the last time I showed this, you know, I might not have been all the way at this marker. I think this marker, how much I knit each day on the train. So I think this marker was day two. I think the last time I showed it to you, I was only one repeat in. Um, but I got through the foot and the heel and have started up the leg, although I have not even gotten to the part where I do the back of the leg. Um, the pattern had a normal slip stitch heel, but I didn't feel like fussing with it and doing wraps and turns, so I just did the fist slip skins because I had it memorized and I was out when I got to the heel. Um, so anyway, I'll knit eh, maybe four more rows and then do the pattern on both sides. But yeah, it's coming along pretty well. It's this nice little lace pattern. Um, you get a little bit of a zigzag and these really cool pearl ridges. Um, so, you know, I love the music to the soundtrack of Hamilton, so it's a fun little kit to make. Um, I might, well, I actually can't give these to my mom because they're not long enough. So, these will be socks for me. I haven't knit, I haven't finished a pair of socks in so long. Um, so, I don't know if it will be these that I finish first, or I did start a pair of pride socks, which I don't think I shared on the podcast, because I brought them to my friend's house to watch the Tonys in June. And I was knitting on them, and left them at her house, and I didn't see her a ton. Um, it's one I do theater with, and didn't see her a ton. Um, and then I've seen her since, it's been really busy, and like the yarn was like someplace in her house where the cleaning lady put it. Anyway, I really want to work on them, they're really cool, but I just haven't had them in my possession. Like, I kept forgetting, she kept forgetting, whatever. It's just socks, right? So. One day, I will finish a pair of socks um, again. So, the next work in progress, again, you sort of saw in the last episode, but there was nothing done on it. Um, I ended up, this is my basic brioche beanie by somebody, Marilyn Blacketer. It's really just, it's a free pattern, which is great. It's just a simple brioche hat. Um, where all you do is practice brioche knitting in the round, and then you decrease it pretty quickly, and then it's done. Um, so I talked about this last time, but I thought about working on this at night on the train, but then there wasn't Wi-Fi, and so I didn't, I just needed to watch it once I hadn't ever done brioche. But last night, I decided that now was the time. Um, actually, because Debbie commented on my last video and was talking about brioche, um, so I, that motivated me, thanks Debbie, and I started this last night, and here we are. This is a brioche hat, oh, it looks so cool on the screen. Oh, look at that, and look at the inside out, of course, the subject of brioche. I tend to like the right side, the side where the, the black is the prevalent knit stitch, a little bit better, um, although on camera, that wrong side looks really good too. Um, so I'm just maybe two inches in. The pattern has you go 11 inches and then so it's got a nice tall hat with a nice uh, big thick brim so you can flip it up and show the reverse side. Um, I might knit it slightly shorter. Um, I don't need that big of a, a rim and it because again I don't necessarily love both sides. It's not that I don't love both sides but uh, I just think this is speckly and crazy, and I would like to wear it into work. 
Um, so I might go one or two inches shorter, but um, not significantly. This is actually building, this is maybe three hours of work uh, for me. It's a little bit, you know, slower of a stitch, but that's okay because, man, I can see the appeal of brioche. It is soft, it is squishy, and it's pretty magical. Um, I'm not gonna lie, and it's not as complicated as I thought it was. Like, I was actually sort of like, I'd heard like I have to concentrate on it, um, but it's very easy to do, and I was able to like even have sort of conversations at Knitting Club today um, while working on it. When we're talking about this at Knitting Club, I actually, I've never done one color brioche, but after doing two color, I think it's almost easier to learn on two color, which seems counterintuitive um, to me, but after doing the brioche stitch and like how you need to knit together what you need to knit together, um, I can see how that would be the case, that like doing two color first and getting the rhythm of it and like what's over, what's together, um, what's slipped, what's knit versus purled, it makes a lot of sense and um, yeah, so if you want to take a brioche, which you should, it's so easy. I was so scared to do it for like a year. Um, don't be afraid of it. Don't be like me. It's super easy. Um, if I can pick it up, you can. But maybe try to start with two color. And I'm not doing anything fancy. Like I've seen some really cool hats, but I just want to get a basic hat done, get it under my fingers, and then I'll do something really cool. Like I think it's like the sizzle pop shawl or... Um, I've seen like some really cool sweaters with brioche detail, so um, highly recommend. The pattern is actually great. I ended up watching a video to just, I like to see, but you almost don't even need the video. Like she's got, and this is a free pattern, so um, I don't feel bad showing it to you, but like she's got all this text in italics. I can show that. Um, it might be a little bit hard to see, but she's got all this text in italics. And it's kind of like her explaining the pattern. Um, and so like, it makes it made it really easy for me to learn. Uh, like I said, I did watch a video. I watched the Unapologetic Knitter um, videos. I found her the most helpful of the couple I looked at. Um, but yeah, it super duper easy. Don't be afraid of brioche is the lesson that I have learned um, in the past 24 hours. <laughs> So, yeah, the yarns I'm knitting with this are Valley Yarns Northampton in the black colorway. It is black yarn, commercially dyed, there's no variegation, there's nothing, it's just black. And then um, Molly Girl Yarns in the Rockstar Base, which is again worsted. And the colorway is Dance, Rascal Dance, which is a black light um, colorway. So you put it under black light and it glows. I'm never in places where I'm under black light. I'm not quite sure why I bought it, except that I just thought it was fun. Um, but this is like the ultimate like surprise hat. Like, woo, the insides of your ribs are glowing. Anyway, I just think it's fun. It's a fun little knit. Um, and it's a good way to just learn brioche. So I am enjoying that. I haven't worked at all on anything larger than that. Um, I'm, like I said, not been feeling well this week, so uh, basic projects were a good thing. Um, actually, what I've been working on most of the week is this. This is a crocheted, look guys, crochet, um, a crocheted scarf. So, that's the other end. My church is doing something, uh, I think they've done it in the past couple of years, called Chase the Chill where church members and community members um, knit or crochet scarves, hats, gloves, um, and we sort of yarn bomb the fence outside of our church, uh, which is in the downtown of Hartford, and people who are homeless or who are living in shelters um, can come and, you know, take these items to keep them a little bit warmer um, if they're out all day or out all night. Um, so, you know, it's... I sort of have trouble with it because I would love to solve the problem of homelessness and not just like put a band-aid over the wound. Um, but you know, it, I'm sure it still feels good um, for someone to have something warm to wear. So, um, oops, my last stitch of the row here got 
pulled out, so I'll just do this. Um, but, you know, I, I decided that I am a knitter. I, I can help in this drive, and so I should. Um, and so I picked up just some Joann's yarn. And the reason I picked up crochet is because it goes a lot quicker. Like, I, knit, I crocheted this in three days. And even with super bulky, I don't think I would have done it. Um, so these are Karen... <sighs> one is sprinkle cakes, one is just, like, tea cakes or something, sparkle cakes. These, this scarf is going to be two different colorways, and they looked very similar, but, like, you can see that they are not. Like, this color is not the same as any ones in here. Um, you can definitely tell here when I started the new skein. Um, this color, this half of the scarf is birthday cake, and this half of the scarf is Earl Grey. And I thought about going back to Michael's and buying another one. I was like, you know what? It's a charity knit. And that's not to say that people who need this scarf deserve less, but I think, or that they wouldn't appreciate having a scarf that's the same colorway, but I think the more important thing is to have a scarf that keeps them warm. Um, so while it bothers me, um, I would rather just spend my time getting it done um, rather than waiting. So... Yeah, that's that. Um, so I will make at least one, probably two more um, scarves for this drive. Um, so you might see those in next episodes. But uh, yeah, this is just all. I did 22 stitches, double crochet every stitch. Um, my Two of my best friends crochet, so um, one of them taught me, and so I just have been crocheting. It's like super mindless, super easy, which is what I needed this week because, like I said, wasn't feeling well, just wanted mindlessness. Alright, that is it for Works in Progress. That's all I've been working on. I have some fun acquisitions to share because don't I always. Reasonable though, so considering I haven't podcasted since the summer. I think there's probably more that I've bought, but I was thinking back over it couldn't really figure out anything. I know one other thing, actually there's a couple other major things, but um, those specifically have projects in mind, although this one does too. Um, but anyway, we'll get there when we get there, right? There's no use sharing all my acquisitions at once, because then you all think I'm crazy. So, this is uh, the farthest away of my acquisitions. I had an impromptu day off a couple of weeks ago and I went up to Webbs and they started selling kits there which I really like because while I enjoy buying single skeins of fingering yarn as you'll see in uh, just a moment in my acquisition section um, and I also enjoy two color or three color or four color things sometimes it's hard for me to find like enough and I don't want to buy a whole skein if it just needs a, a little bit so Webs has started so, uh, selling some color work kits, um, which have a good amount of yarn, and so um, I bought one. So this is the um, Which Way Shawl by Stephanie Shimon. Um, it's actually a little bit hard to see the pattern um, on this little picture that's in there, but I think it's ju it's just stripes. Um, so there's a main color and then a contrasting color, and so I imagine you stripe the main color and then, let me see how much I paid for it, um, then go through the gradient colors. So, um, the main color on this, okay, sorry, let's take a step back, and everything's going all over this, because of course it is. So, this is Wonderland Yarns Matte Hatter, which is their sport base, um, this is the, um, the main color is called Sleeping Griffin. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's... Yeesh. The main color is called Sleeping Griffin, which is just this gorgeous teal. You guys know me. Can't say no to teal. Uh, it's reading a little bluer on the screen, on my screen at least, than it is in real life. But uh, I assure you it's pretty darn teal. And then we've got minis called Coal and Scuttles. So it's just... Um, a gradient of grays. 
So you just sort of stripe these going down the gradient with the teal. Um, so I think it's uh, it's seven seven um, no, no. it's five one ounce skeins and one four ounce skein. So uh, I think four ounces is the same as 100 grams. Um, so it's just a little over two skeins of yarn. So it should give me uh, a fairly hefty shawl, uh, considering it is I mean it is sport weight or DK weight. Sport weight. Um, but still, it should give me a fairly hefty shawl. Um, I don't know if I'm going to knit this tomorrow. I also got on the webs, they were having a sale on kits, so I bought a um, On the Spice Market by Melanie Bird kit, um, which I've been wanting to knit for a while. But again, like, I don't like to buy, like, I need to find mini skeins. I find a hard time. I don't know. This was good. Um, I got that, and so that might be one of my next shawls. But actually, my next shawl project is already in the works. Um, my knitting group that meets on Saturday mornings is doing an informal knit-along. Um, I mean, I say informal because it's not like a podcaster's knit-along where there would be prizes. Um, but we're doing a amongst ourselves knit-along um, of the Waiting for Rain shawl by, I think it's Sylvia Bobilvia, which I have knit before. You might remember it. I want to say it's like from episode 14 where I showed it off. Um, and I really, really loved it. So I said, you know, even though I've knit it before, I'm going to knit it again. So I got yarn for that. Let me just pause for one sec because my uh, camera's going to run about to um, run out, stop timing in just a couple seconds. So be right back. Yeah, so I was in California, and what else did I do but go to a yarn shop? Because I was by myself, and I picked up the perfect yarn for this project. Um, so I was at Auburn Needleworks in Auburn, California. Lovely little shop. The people there were super duper friendly. Um, and I picked up... I wish I could have found, like, cal they didn't have much local yarn, or else I would have tried to find some of it. But they had a good selection of this. Oh, look at this gorgeous. This is Malabrigo Sock in the Cereza colorway. Malabrigo, sorry, not Sock. Um, Makita, it's the single ply base. Um, this is 100% Merino Superwash and single ply, and oh, it's just this gorgeous, lightly tonal, like, ruby red, um, which I actually think looks really good on me. So, um, I did a two-color Waiting for Rain last time out of, um, what's the opposite of single ply? Well, I guess whatever ply it is. Not single ply, I think it was four ply. Could have been two ply, I don't remember. Non-single ply, um, and so I just saw this and I had to get these two skeins. Um, so they're starting that knit along in two weeks. I unfortunately won't be there on the day they all cast it on, but I'll cast it on the next day um, once I get home from my next trip. Um, and it'll be awesome. And then I was in California in my little bed and breakfast room and everyone was at Rhinebeck. Um, and I was like, ah. Oh. And I saw a couple of people were having Weinbeck or not at Rhinebeck sales, so I bought some yarn because why not? Um, both from dyers I bought from before. I really I should branch out. But both these dyers are awesome, so also I shouldn't. Um, this is TV Button Studio, who is Robin of the Cherry Pearls podcast, which I keep talking about. Check her out. Um, her and her mom have a really awesome podcast. They're both really talented knitters, and Robin is an amazing dyer, as you can see by this skein. This is her Tough Sock, which is 80% BFL, 20% nylon. Um, this is the colorway Caron Delet. I don't think I said that right. It's probably a French word. I think it was one of the New Orleans-inspired colorways. Um, I apologize. I speak no French. Um, but it's this really pretty, like, there's browns and pinks and blues. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I, I feel like I want it to be something more than socks. I feel like this could be, I feel like this could be something. Don't know what yet, but maybe mittens. I need to make mittens. This would be good mittens. Um, so there's that. And then I got, uh, Haverland. Um, this is her PAX sock, which is 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon, 
And this is the colorway Life's Too Short for Boring Yarn, which I believe is one of her charity colorways, which um, I really love that she does specific colorways for, uh, not, colorways aren't like for charities, but there are specific listings in her shop and the proceeds go to charities. She started it, I think she started it, um, after the Orlando Pulse shooting and she had a rainbow colorway where the proceeds went to the victims of that. Um, and I, that's how I found out about her. Um, I may have followed her beforehand, but that was the first purchase I made from her. And I knit her rainbow socks out of that yarn, and they came out awesome. And I loved her self stri I love her self striping. She has some really awesome colorways, but there's nothing that was really speaking to me. So I picked up this um, kind of speckly, uh, neutral with purple, yellow, a um, little bit of green. This will probably be socks. Although now that I know how to brioche, I. I will say I don't love Stephen West patterns, but I've been eyeing the Exploration Station for a really long time. But because there's that little brioche section, I've always been too afraid to start. Um, so I might, I might play around in my stash. I think I probably have enough where I could figure out four skeins that would look good. So um, that's coming someday down the line. No rush. And that is it for full-on knitting content. Um, I hope you have enjoyed. I apologize for my dying plant, by the way. Forgot to water it this week. It's pretty resilient. I've had it for about a year, and it's looked like that probably 20 times, and you just water it and it taps right back up. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, life is really, really awesome. Um, I was in California, and, oh, man, that trip was just so cool. To just sit on the train, watch the world go by. I talked about this last time, but it was a great trip, and then once I got to California, um, I took some hikes. If you're from... Now, I've, tra I've been really lucky to travel a lot, so it wasn't, like, as astounding. But being from the East, I always forget how vast parts of our country is, because we're so dense here that it's hard to, like, really see the vastness. Um, and, you know, like, we have mountains, and I've, I've done some hikes up, but... Man, like, it is so vast and expansive and just it makes you feel so small, but, like, in an amazing way. Oh, it was just so cool uh, to see that, both on the train and then in some of the hikes I did. Like, I hiked in this giant gorge. Like, it was this huge... Oh, my gosh. Um, luckily, I stayed away from the fires. Um, I got to see my friend get married, uh, and I actually got to hang out with her also, which I didn't expect the day after her wedding. Um, so nice of her and her new husband to spend some time with me the day after. Um, and, you know, this is a friend I don't talk to a ton. She lives in California. She's always lived in California. Um, we met through work when she was traveling here for work. Um, but I just, I love to see my friends happy. <laughs> um, and she was so happy. Uh, on her wedding day, and, and it was great. Um, and then I flew back home, which was the worst part of the trip, because flying sucks after taking the train for three and a half days. Um, so yeah, I had this week at work, and next week at work, and then my roommate and I get on a plane 6 o'clock Saturday morning, and we fly to Miami. Um, we spent, we're going to spend like two nights in Miami, and then on Monday, we get on a cruise ship, and we do five days on a ship, we stop in Roatan, um, Honduras, and Cozumel, Mexico, um, which, um, and so this is a Celtic Thunder charter cruise. Yeah, uh, it should be fun. So, you know, sailing with a bunch of Irish men, well, the singers are Irish men, the people on the cruise are primarily women. Um, but yeah. Some of the fans are a little bit kooky, but the cruise should be fun, and we are going to do one excursion um, in Cozumel to some old ruins, and then we're actually going to do a bus tour of Miami on the day we get back, because our flight doesn't leave till like, I think it's like 5 or 6 or 6, maybe even 7 at night. Um, so anyway, that's going to be awesome. My roommate and I get along really well and travel together really well. We've been best friends for over 20 years now, so um, it'll be an awesome trip. So, yeah, I mean, life is busy. I think I had like three days in October where I wasn't doing something. Now, some of that was vacation, so I can't complain too much, but um, I'm stage managing for a show called Forever Plaid, but I also did like this cabaret. Um, so, yeah, things are really busy, but really good. 
don't know when I'm going to build the podcast again, but had some time, had some progress, finished objects, so wanted to share with you all today. Thank you so much um, for those few of you who watch me. I really do appreciate uh, every view I get, every comment I get, um, and I just like talking to the void and hanging out, and it motivates me to knit, um, which is a thing that I love to do. So, um, yeah, life is good, y'all. Things aren't perfect because they never are, but, you know, for the most part, I'm doing all right. So, um, thanks again for watching. I hope that whatever you're knitting, you're enjoying, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. See you next time.